with Ranger. Yes, what is... Inside, baby. Inside, I said. Well, Gloria, here we are. Huh? Why don't you let me alone? Get out of here. Not yet. All right. I'll call the police. The police? Go ahead. Call. Here. You want me to dial for you? Wait until they show up here. I'd like to hear what charges you make against me, baby. All right. Put it down. <laughs> That's better. A lot better. What do you want? The dough, baby. Hand it over. Well, I haven't any money. Stop lying. I know you got it. Let that purse alone. Oh. I didn't have any dough, huh? I'll just take this roll of bills, baby. And don't double-cross me again. Just play it smart, Gloria, and nothing will happen. For that, I'm going to get you. And get you good. This is Steve Granger, private detective, with a story about a girl who decided to get married and tried so hard that it nearly killed me. In just a moment, I'll take you back to one of my most interesting cases. Stranger, and in my hand I have a note which reads, Meet me at the rendezvous room at ten tonight. I'll be in the bar wearing a pink dress. Signed, Gloria Lane. This is ten o'clock, and this is the rendezvous room. One of the smarter Manhattan supper clubs. Filled to the brim with customers just itching to part with a ten dollar bill. Not knowing what Gloria Lane looked like, I leaned up against the bar and waited for developments. Pink dress? Yours, Steve Granger. And your? Gloria Lane. Glad to meet you, Miss Lane. I'm glad to meet you. Want to talk here, or shall we uh, find a spot a little more secluded? I think we should get out of here. Let's go. Well, well, if it isn't the demon detective. How are you, Granger? Pretty good, Rick. Miss Lane, do you know uh, Rick Darrell, the owner of the rendezvous? Oh, Gloria, I didn't realize it was you. How are you? I'm fine, Rick. I can assume that you two have me. Yeah, many times, Granger. Gloria, uh, why are you with a private investigator? Business? Oh, hardly. Granger and I are old friends. We were just leaving. I beg your pardon. There's a telephone call for Miss Lane. I'm sorry, I haven't time to talk on the phone right now. We were just leaving. I must beg Miss Lane's pardon again. This is a most important call. Long distance, the operator said. Very well. Will you wait, Granger? I'd be delighted. I will show you the phone, Miss Lane. I'll find it myself. I waited ten minutes, then twenty. Miss Lane didn't show up. I wandered out to the line of telephone booths in the lobby of the rendezvous and found no Gloria Lane. In the corner of the head waiter, who paged her. Yes, Mr. Granger. What happened to Miss Lane? She hasn't returned. I don't see her in any of the phone booths. Uh, she had a long-distance call, sir. I don't know what it said, but she left here very abruptly. She left no message for me? None whatsoever, Mr. Granger. You know where she could have gone? Where she lives? <laughs> Hardly, Mr. Granger. I'm just the head waiter. Thanks. I moved down the street... Wondering what this was all about. The look in Gloria Lane's eyes when the head waiter paged her indicated fear. But why disappear? Or had Pauletti lied and had someone forced her to accompany them? I stopped for a second, debating what to do. Then I heard it. This was someone in pain. Someone down an alleyway just to my right. She was lying alongside the wall of the building. And she was my recent friend, Gloria Lane. Get me home. Sure, Gloria, sure. Now, this is Granger. Where do you live? I, I live at... Come on, baby, come on, wake up. I'd better carry into the rendezvous and call a doctor. Put it down and what? don't turn around. Listen, fellow. Don't turn around. Feel this? 
All right, so you got a gun. And this girl has been badly beaten. She needs a doctor. Mister, just mind your own business. This time will be taken care of, understand? Now go on, get moving. I don't think so. Oh, do you catch it? You haven't got nerve enough to shoot. This is a blind alley. There'll be four cops on your back before you made the street. Oh, wise guy, huh? Just so wise that I'm taking this girl out of here. Okay, pick her up. Thanks. Pick up! I'll continue with this interesting story in a minute. As I bent over to pick up the limp body of Gloria Lane, the man behind me with a gun made me a present of it, right on the top of the head. When I came to, I stared around, brushed off my clothes, and got to my feet. The alley was deserted. No Gloria Lane... And no sign of the guy who knocked me out. I looked round for a door and found it. The back entrance to the rendezvous. I moved through the kitchen into the main room of the club and asked questions. Rick Darrell wasn't around. Paletti, the head waiter, wasn't around. No one had seen Gloria Lane. I took myself home, went to bed, hoping to forget the whole thing. In the morning, I went to my office sat down, read the newspapers. Nobody had reported anything. Stranger, I want to talk to you. Hi, Rick. A little early for a night spot operator to be around, isn't it? I want to ask you some questions, Granger. Oh, like what? Why were you with Gloria Lane last night? <laughs> I think that's my business. Although it should be obvious, she's a very attractive woman. Did you take her home? Nope. Hmm. What's wrong, Rick? I've got a chore for you. Find Gloria Lane for me. Why? Personal reasons. I'll pay $100 and give you 24 hours in which to do it. It's a large order. Got any ideas? A few. Just why are you so anxious to find Gloria Lane? She promised to marry me two weeks ago. Oh? I don't like people who break promises. Can't blame you. And that goes for you, too. If I find out that you saw Gloria after she left the rendezvous, you'll answer to me. If you're going to be tough about this, find another boy to run your errands. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, you didn't see her. Rick. Yeah? Would anybody want to harm her in any way? Would there be a reason to grab her and hold her for a price? That's what I want you to find out. Rick Darrell threw Gloria Lane's address at me and slammed out the door. I waited a few minutes and beat it down the street myself. Hey, you. Yeah, what's on your mind? You're Granger, ain't you? Yeah. I'm Herbie. Well, now that we know each other so well, see you later. Hey, wait. Hey, you're not going that way. You're coming along with me. Am I? Yeah. You're pretty brassy, aren't you? Putting a finger on a man in broad daylight. This is no finger. A man wants to see you. I'm here to see that he does. This man, as you say, he uh, doesn't know where my office is. Huh? Sure. But he don't want to go there. He wants you at his place. He likes to stay out of sight. From the looks of his helper, he must live down a hole someplace. Cracks don't harm me none. Now get going. If I crack you, get will. Well, well, well. The 79 Club. Now this is it. Get out, Granger. I do to do a little gambling, is that it? Get moving. I don't have a choice. Don't be scared, little man. Nobody's going to hurt you. you. call me little man, chum. Good, I said. One day, you and I will meet under different circumstances. Ah, oh, shut up. You make me tired. And vice versa. Go on. Walk inside. Now what? 
Is there a floor show this time of day? Down this hall. This door right here. I'll walk in and meet the boss. I had a hunch it'd be something like this. Jerry Regan himself. Have a chair, Granger. I'd love to take a chair. And break it over this gorilla's head. Close the door, Herbie. Sure. You always send your strong men to bring people to the 79 Club? At least it's a novel way to attract trade. Granger, got a job for you. No, thanks. I'm not interested in any of your projects. I want to live a while. This is legitimate, Granger. Goodbye. You ain't going anyplace. Stand still. I'll be brief, Granger. Last night you met a woman named Gloria Lane at the rendezvous. She disappeared. What's your interest, Regan? She's the most beautiful woman in the world. Oh? You see, I can't send the boys to look for her. They don't have any finesse. Dear me. You see, it turns out that I'm going to marry you this time. You too. What was it, Remark? No, I said you are? Certainly am. Get the license to prove it. Now get started looking for Miss Lane. This is her home address in New York. Well, thanks, Jerry, but uh, do you think I can do the job? You're the best bloodhound in New York. Oh, just to see that you stick to your work. There'll be here, go alone. I don't need him. Let him stay here. I think you do, Granger. Also, if you should slip up, he's got orders to bring you back here. And if that happens, it won't be so good for you. You see, Herbie takes a real pride in his work. Don't you, Herbie? Yeah. Herbie turned a smile on me that resembled the expression on a wolf's face as he sneaks up on a rabbit. I didn't need three guesses as to what would happen if I didn't come up with Miss Gloria Lane, the girl who wanted to get married twice. In just a minute, I'll bring you the climax of the case. I left Jerry Regan's 79 Club with his outsized gorilla Herbie right on my heels. Finding Gloria Lane was beginning to mean more than solving another case. It meant staying comfortably in one piece as well. Our first port of call was the marriage license bureau where I had a friend. Well, Granger, thinking of getting married? Nope, I need some information. Who's your pal and what's the matter with his face? His name is Herbie. His face got that way when his mother parked him for a week in a deep freeze. Larry, here's what I want. Tell me if your office issued a marriage license to a woman named Gloria Lane and a man named Jerry Regan. Well, I don't know, but step in and have a look. Right. Here we are. Lane. Lane. No, oh, here you are. Gloria Lane, 3267 East 91st Street, and Jerry Regan. Yeah. I want you to look up one more license, if it's recorded. Uh, who's this one for? Rick Darrell. Darrell, eh? Just a minute. Uh, here we are. Rick Darrell and... Gloria Lane. Thanks, boy. Is this the same Gloria Lane? Yep. Hey, this doll doesn't know that polygamy has been outlawed for years. She's going to be in trouble. I know. See you later, Larry. Yeah, but I wanted to... Hey, where are you going? Out to look for Gloria Lane. Brother, what has this name got? Herbie the Hood and I left the Hall of Records and proceeded along the corridor. When we got out into the street, I had my chance to get rid of him. A quick push, a dive into a cruising cab... And I was on my way to Gloria Lane's address. The landlady told me she had left. But she also told me that Gloria Lane had a girlfriend named Ella Murray, who lived on the west side. When I got to the Murray girl's address, I got on my way. Wow. Hello. Hiya. What on your mind? I came over to talk about uh, Gloria Lane, uh, I'm a friend. Oh, you uh, must be a new one. Oh, no, no, no. I'm an old one. Of course, I'm not uh, Rick Darrell, nor am I Jerry Regan. <laughs> I can see that. By the way, I was uh, just over at Gloria's place. She doesn't seem to be around. No, she's sort of 
tied up. So, what's the routine, mister? May I come in? Why not? Ellen Murray, after a little coaxing, started chatting about Gloria Lane. Some of these things were startling. Some not. She also mentioned that the Lane girl had gone to a small upstate New York town to recover from her injuries. She acted like she was terribly frightened about something. Hmm. Think I'll uh, drive up to this town and see her. Pretty late in the day to do that, isn't it? This might be important. Just a minute, mister. You're not after her to do her any harm. I'd hate to think I'd put her on the spot. Oh, I wouldn't do any harm. Matter of fact, I'm beginning to think I can do her some good. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, I'll see you later, Ella. It's been fun. I'd like to see you later. Maybe I will. Ella Murray handed over the exact address of Gloria Lane's place in Spartan. I got downtown, rented a car, and started the drive upstate. Yeah, Granger. Inside, baby. Oh. How did you find out where I was? Your girlfriend told me. Get your coach. You're going back to New York. Me? Why? There's some money in this for me, baby, and I'm going to collect it. But, Granger, I can't go back to the city. They'll... I know what they'll do. And I hope it happens. I never did like chiselers. So we won't even wait for you to get your coat. Come on. At least let me fix my face. I'll be right back. <laughs> I listened for the sounds of a back door closing because I didn't believe a word Gloria Lane said. I never heard the door, but I did hear something else. Now, listen. Here's what I mean. Put down that phone, baby, or I will. Who was that? Did you say I was here? I won't tell. So you did. Come on, we'll drive back to New York without your face. Maybe you won't need it anyway. Granger, listen to me. What? I can't go back there. I'll pay you plenty if you'll let me go. No soap. But I can't face him. It's not him, baby. It's they. And I wouldn't miss this meeting for the world. Granger, won't you listen to reason? Please let me off any place along here. I'll walk. You'll walk. When we get into the city, now be quiet. Granger, I could do you a lot of good if you'd play my way. Your way? It'd buy me a nice cold slab in the morgue. But I've got money, a lot of money. Just forget it, baby. Granger, you're not being fair. I hired you first. You got two men after me I'd rather not have as enemies. Oh, you're smart. You could get around them. If they paid you to find me, you could say you didn't find me. Thanks for reminding me that I double-cross clients. Even those I don't want around. Granger, there's another car coming up fast. Stop jittering. What did you tell the man you were talking to that I was up here? Did you? No. Duck, he's running us off the road. Oh, ah! When I opened my eyes again, there was a face leering down at me. Not a very nice face, so it belonged to the head waiter, Paletti. I was still in my own car, but my hands were tied. Well, so you come too, huh? Yeah. But you're helpless. Where's Gloria Lane? In my car, which is not so damaged it can't be driven. You're taking her, are you? I am. Okay, goodbye and good luck. Because Jerry Regan and Rick Darrell won't like the story I'm going to tell them. You won't tell any story, Granger. You won't be able to. I'm being cool, is that it? That's right. Most unfortunate. I got in like this. I start the car like this, and you wind up in that ravine. At this speed, I can jump. Okay, buddy, how do you feel? Uh, oh, lucky you weren't killed. Hey, listen, Trooper, I'm Steve Granger. Private Eye from New York. Granger? I heard of you. What happened? I was run off the road deliberately. Did you see another car leaving here? No, sorry, I didn't. Uh-oh. Well, maybe you better explain exactly what did happen. 
I made a concise report to the state police trooper, got his permission to leave, and flagged down a ride into the nearest small town. From there, a train took me to Manhattan. A few minutes later, I was at Cal Hendricks' place. Hey, Steve, you look like you've been in the wars. Never mind that, Cal. I'm in a spot. I was supposed to find a certain woman. She's been fooling two guys into thinking she was going to marry him. Oh, gag. She works with a confederate. His name is Paletti. I had the woman in a car coming down from Spartan. He took it away from me. I'm in a spot because of the two men. Tell them the truth. They happen to be Rick Darrell and Jerry Regan. Ah, cute pair of hoodlums. Carol, i got to find that girl or my name will be embossed on a tombstone. Oh, is she? Her name is Gloria Lane. Uh-uh. You know her? Just from this late edition of the paper. Take a look. Yeah. State troopers found the body of a young woman identified as Gloria Lane, 32670 East 91st Street, New York, lying in a culvert off Highway 9 an hour ago. She'd been killed with a knife. Brother, I'm in trouble unless I move fast. You're not moving anywhere. Both of you stand still. Cal, let me introduce you. I know him, Rick Darrell. Yeah, and I know you, Hendricks. That's how I figured where Granger might be. Granger, we're going for a walk. You double-crossing... You don't know what you're talking about. You knife Gloria Lane. That's what I know. If you'll check state police headquarters, you'll find out I was involved in a car accident and couldn't possibly have killed her. I don't believe you. If we can locate a certain man, I can prove that Gloria Lane was not only chiseling you, but one other man. What? What? Want to take a chance? If we hurry, we can grab him. All right, just this once, Granger. And you better be right. It took a few minutes to check Paletti's address in the phone book. I didn't tip Darrell because I wanted to make use of the surprise element. When I found what I wanted, we got on our way. What are you trying to pull, Granger? This is where Paletti, my head waiter, lives. I know it. Say, how long had Paletti worked for you? Uh, five months. How long had you known Gloria Lane? What? Five months. That's what I thought. Yeah, Granger! Okay, get him up! Well, Pauletti, I see you're panicking. What is this, Granger? Pauletti and Gloria Lane were partners. Her girlfriend, Ella Murray, told me that. She also told me that they'd worked this marriage racket a lot of cities. He's lying. It was a simple routine. Gloria was good-looking. Pauletti would find a man with dough. This guy would fall for him. That'd be a proposal of marriage. Then Gloria would need money. Okay, wise guy, stay put. I'm leaving. There's more, Pauletti, and I want Daryl to hear it. This time, they played it two ways. They not only got you on the hook, but they corralled Jerry Regan over in Jersey. Regan? When Paletti found out she double-crossed him out of the money, he killed her. Okay, keep those hands in the air. Why, you dirty... Don't move, Darrell. One more step and I shoot. All right, go ahead. Well, friends, that's the story. I'll be back to wrap up the case in just a minute. I had a hand it to Rick Darrell for nerve. He walked straight for Paletti. I dived for the headwaiter's arm, and the shot went wide. Paletti went to jail on a charge of murder. Later, Jerry Regan, Rick Darrow, Gloria's girlfriend, Ella Murray, and I had a date. Gee, I like this place. That's fine, Ella. You know, Grange, you've done a good job. Me and Rick here, we never liked each other. No, but now we sort of buried the hatch. Yeah, Herbie checked the marriage license bureau later like you told me to. Found out you've told him the truth. Herbie did that? Didn't think he could read. He was a graduate. He went to school. Get out of the eighth grade when he was 16. I thought so. You know, one thing I don't get, why did Gloria try to hire you? I think she was going to hang something on Paletti and let me find out about it. That way she could get rid of him. Oh, I got it. Well, Granger, uh, here's a little piece of money from me. And a little change for me, too. Boys, I'm overwhelmed. Oh, that's okay. Jerry and I got back most of the dough Gloria took us for. Gee, Mr. Granger, you certainly did a good job. Thanks, Ella. Want to go out and spend a little of this money with me? I'd like to, but I got a date with Rick tonight. And with me the next night? Well, what does that leave me? Or I don't tell me. The only date I get... Is the one in the fruitcake. Steve Granger again. You've just heard one of the most interesting cases in my files. And I'll have another one for you. So be around next time.